Hello. Welcome again to Trinity Lutheran Church here in Racine, Wisconsin. This morning, we return once again to the basics, to see the power, the wisdom, and the love of God all revealed to us, especially in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. May our praise and reflection of that truth of God's grace be a blessing to you this day. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Because of the faith created and sustained by the Holy Spirit, we trust that God not only knows our faults, but for the sake of Jesus, He promises to forgive them. Let us consider our sins, asking God for that promised forgiveness. Most merciful God, we confess that we have often forgotten your gracious presence with us each day. We have grieved your Holy Spirit with our self-centered thoughts, our unloving words, and our careless actions. For Jesus' sake, forgive us. Grant us strength of faith and opportunity to share that faith with boldness, confident of your forgiveness, protection, and guidance. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Amen. It is always the desire of our Lord to forgive those who come to him with penitent hearts. Therefore, as a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Glory be to God on high, peace on the earth, good will to men. Join us as we glorify, sounding his praises to the heavens. O Lord God, our heavenly King, O God, the Father, mighty one, 
Jesus Christ, to you we sing, O Lord, only begotten Son. Glory be to God on high, peace on the earth, good will to men. Join us as we glorify, sounding his praises to the heavens. Seated at the right hand of God, we offer you this prayer today. Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Take the whole world's sin away. Glory be to God on high. Peace on the earth, good will to men. Join us as we glorify, sounding his praises to the heavens. You alone are the Holy One, and you alone are Lord of heaven. Christ alone with the Spirit in the Father's glory. Amen. Glory be to God on high. Peace on the earth, good will to men. Join us as we glorify, sounding his praises to the heavens. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God, you have prepared for those who love you good things that surpass all understanding. Pour into our hearts such love toward you that we, loving you above all things, may obtain your promises, which exceed all that we can desire. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Old Testament reading is taken from the book of Exodus, chapter 20. And God spoke all these words, saying, I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself a carved image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. You shall not bow down to them or serve them. For I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers on the children to the third and fourth generations of those who hate me but showing steadfast love to thousands of those who love me and keep my commandments. You shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless who takes his name in vain. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. On it you shall not do any work, you or your son or your daughter, your male servant or your female servant or your livestock or the sojourner who is within your gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea and all that is in them, and rested the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and made it holy. Honor your father and your mother, that your days may be long in the land that the Lord your God is giving you. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife or his male servant or his female servant or his ox or his donkey or anything that is your neighbor's. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle is from St. Paul's first letter to the Corinthians, chapter 1. For the word of the cross is folly to those who are perishing. But to us who are being saved, it is the power of God, for it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and the discernment of the discerning I will thwart. Where is the one who is wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the debater of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? For since in the wisdom of God... The world did not know God through wisdom. It pleased God through the folly of what we preach to save those who believe. For Jews demand signs and Greeks seek wisdom. 
but we preach Christ crucified, a stumbling block to Jews and folly to Gentiles. But to those who are called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God. For the foolishness of God is wiser than men, and the weakness of God is stronger than men. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. And the Holy Gospel is recorded according to St. Luke, the fifth chapter. On one occasion, while the crowd was pressing in on Jesus to hear the word of God, he was standing by the lake of Gennesaret, and he saw two boats by the lake. But the fishermen had gone out of them and were washing their nets. Getting into one of the boats, which was Simon's, he asked him to put out a little from the land, and he sat down and taught the people from the boat. And when he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, Put out into the deep and let down your nets for a catch. And Simon answered, Master, we toiled all night and took nothing, but at your word I will let down the nets. And when they had done this, they enclosed a large number of fish and their nets were breaking. They signaled to their partners in the other boat to come and help them. And they came and filled both the boats, so that they began to sink. But when Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees, saying, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. For he and all who were with him were astonished at the catch of fish that they had taken. And so also were James and John, sons of Zebedee, who were partners with Simon. And Jesus said to Simon, Do not be afraid. From now on you will be catching men. And when they had brought their boats to land, they left everything and followed him. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Grace to you and peace from God our Heavenly Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. 
We reflect this morning especially on St. Paul's words in 1 Corinthians and also upon the law of God as recorded in Exodus chapter 20. We live in a culture cluttered with opinions. And here I don't mean the opinions that each one of us carry around personally, but rather the clutter in our culture of those opinions that are crafted for public broadcast, intended to shape, even to demand, how you see the world. There was a time when a majority of Americans heard the news from the single voice, the voice of Walter Cronkite. He was the long-serving anchor of the CBS Evening News. And for years, as I was growing up, I heard his signature tagline at the end of each broadcast, and that's the way it is, he would say. And so concluded the daily news intake for millions of American households. And that daily broadcast garnered Mr. Concrete a kind of unofficial designation for a time as being the most trusted public voice in America. Who on earth would that be today? News and commentary are almost indistinguishable now. No longer does a single voice resonate with the majority of homes. All sides on the social and political spectrum compete to put their spin on the news and issues of the day. Names like Limbaugh, Shapiro, Stewart, Krugman are popular to many. Some of those may be unknown to you, which rather reflects how crowded the field of voices are that are aggressively selling their version of the truth. One columnist whose work I appreciate is listed on a particular website among 60 others from whom you can choose, 30 of which are given the designation of a pundit. That is to say, they are the supposed experts of the issues of the day. Do you ever find yourself asking, who really knows? Who really understands the issues of our day and tells the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? It can be complicated to wade through all of those voices to find clarity. Some give up on it and just try to tune them all out. Others will develop a real sense of loyalty to a single commentator. It has been said of our age that we consume information in echo chambers, listening only to one side of an issue, and that is the side that echoes our own point of view. St. Paul confronted a cluttered public, public square in the city of Corinth, full of competing philosophies and opinions. And the culture was dominated in part by intellectuals who sought to win the day by their complicated, well-crafted, eloquent arguments. They prided themselves on their philosophies of self-reliance. Demonstrating such wisdom was highly valued and it would secure admiration in the public square. Indeed, factions grew up around these people as they accumulated loyal followers for themselves. Sound familiar? In recent years, to be a self-designated influencer has actually become a career. Attract enough followers and you can make money just by posting your opinion online. Well, Paul strides into, middle, into the middle of all of that supposedly intellectual noise in his day and declares, you've totally missed the point. Now, he doesn't use those exact words. Instead, he rather rhetorically asks, where is the wise one? Where is the debater of this age? Meaning... They don't get it. 
all of their complicated arguments still miss the point. You will not know God, and therefore, ultimately, you will not know the truth by appealing to worldly wisdom. And pushing all of those competing philosophies aside, Paul offers instead this profoundly simple word of God. We preach Christ crucified. It's not eloquent. It's not complicated. It's not entertaining. It is profoundly the simple truth of God's Word. And Paul adds, just beyond our reading for today, when I came to you, I did not come with eloquence or superior wisdom. I resolved to know nothing while I was with you except Jesus Christ and Him crucified. And so as you engage in our culture, cluttered with so many competing voices, all clamoring to sell you their version of the truth, I urge you to cling again to this simple, profound truth of God's Word. We preach Christ crucified. Some in Paul's day believed, as do we. Many rejected his preaching as completely backward foolishness. And many do the same today. So let's face that criticism. And let's be honest. It does seem all backward. The innocent dying for the guilty. The very source of life handed over to the practitioners of the worst possible death. The all-powerful becoming the victim for the sake of the powerless. The Holy One tortured on a cross so that the sinful ones would escape their due punishment. Yes, it all seems so very backward. But in that supposed backwardness, we see Christ. Paul describes Christ as the power of God and the wisdom of God. What the Corinthians who rejected Paul's preaching as completely backward and foolish, didn't understand, and what those who reject the preaching of the gospel today as completely backward and foolish do not understand is this. The wisdom of God is not rooted in human logic and argument. The wisdom of God is rooted in love. It's not backward. Quite the contrary. The wisdom and power of God demonstrated on the cross is the most profound act of limitless love that there is imaginable. God transformed the cross, the worst possible instrument of human evil, into a symbol, the greatest symbol of love. Jesus said himself, greater love has no one than this, that someone would lay down his life for his friends. And that's how God's love is expressed. Jesus' life laid down upon a cross for you. Paul writes, the word of the cross is folly, that is foolishness, to those who are perishing, but to us, who are being saved, it is the power of God. There is no greater word of God's power and wisdom than this, and it is profoundly simple. As we preach Christ crucified, we also preach what theologians call the whole counsel of God. That is to say, the whole word of God, all that God revealed in Holy Scripture. And we hear in God's word in Leviticus... Be holy, for I, the Lord your God, am holy. And he's not kidding. And that leads us back to Exodus chapter 20, to the commandments. And there we find a word that is impossibly difficult. 
we need to be reminded that these are nothing less than the absolute commands of God for our pursuit of a holy life. You are never to allow anything in your life to overshadow the priority of God. You are never to allow even your eyes to stray toward the beauty of someone who is not pledged to you in marriage. You are never to allow your heart to be envious of the wealth or possessions of another. Never to harbor hatred. Never to dishonor your parents. Never to speak a false word about another human being. You are never to dismiss the holiness of the Sabbath in pursuit of some other interest or event. Now ask yourself, how's that working out for you? Who among us can stand up and declare, of all of that, I have never? Well, none of us, of course. And yet Scripture remains clear. The unrighteous, the unholy, will not enter the kingdom of God, period. This is an impossibly difficult word of God, and we dare not ignore it. We dare not treat it casually. Instead, we come back again to the cross in confession, in humble repentance, in faith. When we take the whole counsel of God, the whole word of God, seriously, we are then much better able to recognize how powerful, how wise, and how saturated in love is St. Paul's profoundly simple proclamation, we preach Christ crucified. For in that preaching, we all together cling to this unwavering promise of God that we the guilty, the unrighteous, the powerless, cling to the wisdom and power and love of God demonstrated in Christ Jesus, crucified and risen victorious for us. There is no substitute. No philosophy, no worldview, no other faith, no other religion, of nothing else, no other commentary can compare with what the world sees as the foolishness of God and what we recognize as the grace of God. As you strive to be holy in the eyes of God, and I hope that you do with all your strength, never cease to cling to the promise of God's grace in the cross. For as Paul writes, to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. It is life itself. Amen. And may the peace of God, which far surpasses our human understanding, guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus, today and always. Amen. We speak together the words of faith of the Christian church around the world using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty, from thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray for the whole Church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. For the blessed proclamation of Christ crucified for our salvation, we praise you, O God. May we see by faith in that sacrifice of Jesus your power, wisdom, and love poured out upon the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
for all pastors and teachers in Christ who preach and teach that gospel to the next generations, that they would remain bold and uplifted in their vocations, that many would hear and by your Spirit come to believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing in him is the way unto eternal life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For a renewed sense of unity in our country, that by your gentle guidance, O Lord, we would come again to recognize the immeasurable value of every life, that all in our culture would feel recognized and included, and that we learn to address our differences in peace and the pursuit of reconciliation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the sick, for those preparing to undergo surgery, those who are recovering, for the elderly and shut-in, and for all who desire our prayers, that according to God's good and gracious will, they may receive healing, comfort, and assurance of his care for them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For a blessing upon our land, that the harvest may be bountiful, that opportunity for fruitful labor may be plentiful, and that all who are blessed with abundant resource may be bold and generous in the care and service of anyone who is in need. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For an end to the pandemic, and for a special measure of your grace and mercy upon all who suffer physical, spiritual, and economic hardship because of it, Guide those who lead our communities through this uncertain time and those who labor toward a treatment and cure. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who also taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. Amen.